Uh, it was really amazing after six years, I don't, didn't realize how, you know, how much I forgot how flat it is there. Uh, you know, not a lot of trees and you can see for miles. They say you can watch your dog running away for three days. <laughs> and, but it's, it's just, uh, it was fun being with family and friends. It's been six years since we've been there, so uh, it, was, it was a blessing to be there. But it's a blessing to be home and uh, it's a blessing to be able to minister God's word today. Amen. Amen. Uh, there was a guy that sent his dog off to uh, dog college, and uh, the dog went off, and, and you know he lived on campus, came back after the first semester, and uh, the, the guy's asking his dog, so how, how are things going at school? And the dog says, well, I'm doing great in math and science, but I'm having trouble with foreign languages. And the guy says, oh, really? Let me say something in a foreign language. Let me see how it's going. And he goes, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that didn't work. Let's try something else, okay. During a visit to the mental asylum, I asked the director, how do you determine whether or not a patient should be institutionalized? Well, said the doc director, we fill up a bathtub, then we offer a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket to the patient and ask him or her to empty the bathtub. Oh, I understand, I said. A normal person would use the bucket because it's bigger than the teaspoon or the teacup. No, said the director, a normal person would pull the plug out of the tub. You want to bet near the window? I know some of you were thinking, which one would be good? Anyway, so it's good to be in God's house. We are looking forward, as, as we always do. It's a very important time of year. Looking forward to the National Day of Prayer. Yes, uh, amen. I know that you know that our nation needs prayer. Yes. Um, the people of this nation need prayer. The politicians of this nation really need prayer. Oh, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to be alive. Yes. You say, oh, how can yes. you say that? It seem like everything's going crazy. Because when evil and, and all those things, darkness increases, grace does much more increase. Yes, amen. amen. God is moving in this, in this nation. And uh, we need to be able to see that. Yes. We need to be able to pray towards that. Yes. And believe that God will do something through our prayers. I think a lot of times, you know, we, we think about the National Day of Prayer every year, and we come in for half an hour or an hour, or however long we want to sign up to pray, and we pray, and then we're like, okay, you know, that's it for this year. Oh. No. No, we need to understand that as we pray together as a nation, that God does things through that prayer. And that it does, it's not just one day a year. And we offer up prayers, you know, for leaders and, and those in authority every single day. Because they need it. We need it. Amen? Amen. Uh, so we're kind of going along in that direction today. Uh, agreement is what we're talking about. The advantage of agreement. When we can come together and agree upon anything, that's a good thing. Yes. A lot of times when you get 30 people together, you get 30 different opinions. Yes. But if you can get them all to agree together on something, that's a powerful thing. Yes. Right? Agreement is defined as the act of agreeing or coming to a mutual agreement. The state of being in accord. Yes. An arrangement that is accepted by all parties to a transaction. A contract or other document delineating such an arrangement. Or also unanimity, unanim, unanimity, how's that? <laughs> unanimity of opinion, harmony in feeling. There's something dynamic about agreement, about unity, about harmony, when we can all come together and do the same thing. If uh, this dance team was up there, everybody was just doing their own thing, it wouldn't be nearly as beautiful as it was when they were doing this together, according to the music, according to the steps, the choreography. That's what made it so wonderful, right? That's agreement. That's coming together to do the same thing. When we all come together on a thing, we can accomplish greatness, yes. right? Like the Bible says, one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Imagine us all getting together intent on one purpose. Wow. <coughs> it doesn't mean that we're all just alike. Right? But that we can all agree on something. Amen? We don't just need to do that as this body, but as the body of Christ. We need to get into agreement on some things. Yes. Nehemiah in the Bible says that, that he went to Jerusalem. He had a burden from God to 
rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. They have been torn down. Uh, the, the captives have been taken, then they return. But the walls of Jerusalem were broken down. He had a vision from God to rebuild those walls. He went to the people of Jerusalem, and together, in unity and agreement, they rebuilt those walls in 52 days, which was an amazing feat, a miracle of God. Our founding fathers got together and built a nation because they agreed about freedom. We, the people, right? Not we, the politicians, and you people. We, the people, right? And in retrospect, that's why our government can't accomplish much good these days. That's right. Because they can't agree on anything. That's true. It's all political. God even understands the power of agreement. Throughout all eternity, and in the process of creation, there was agreement by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. They said, let us make man in our image. There was no fighting going on. Jesus wasn't going, no, I don't want to make him like this. And the Holy Spirit, no, let's do this. And the Father, we're going to do this, boys. No. They said, let us do this. Let us make man. They were in perfect agreement. Right? As they created man, as, as creation went on, and then as... Uh, as men grew evil and the, the world was destroyed by a flood and uh, Noah and his family came off of the ark and uh, men started to populate and God said, you know, fill the earth. And instead of filling the earth, they decided to all stay together. They had one language. They decided we're going to build a tower to the heavens because we're going to make a name for ourselves. Right? Well, that purpose was evil and it was disobedient, but God recognized the power of in their agreement. He says in Genesis 11, 5, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people, speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. God recognized man's ability to do great things if they are in agreement. Amen? So this morning we're talking about prayers of agreement. Praying in agreement with one another. Jesus revealed to his disciples the advantage of agreement in prayer. He says in Matthew 18, 19, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. When we can just get two of us together agreeing upon one thing, in the presence of Jesus, in his name, what did it say? It will be done. Everybody say that. It will be done. Because of what? Because of that agreement. Because of the faith that's in that. Amen? Because of that prayer. Agreement and prayer is a very powerful thing. But understand this. It's much more involved than a lot of us think it is. Okay? Many prayers of agreement are not effective. Why is that? Because praying in agreement doesn't just mean that we all agree and hope that Sister Ethel will get well. Right? Or that the church building will be paid off pretty soon and we hope that the money will come in. That's not a prayer of agreement. I mean, we can all agree about that, but that's not a prayer of agreement. Okay? To properly understand what a prayer of agreement is, we must first understand what prayer is. Right. And I think a lot of us don't understand that. Okay? Prayer is not just talking to God. Right. Prayer is not just, you know, carrying on a conversation with the man upstairs. Okay? It's not like, hey up, hey up there, Lord, I hope you can hear me down here. You know, uh, how's the weather up there? Things going good in heaven? That's not what prayer is. You see, when we communicate and just talk to each other at face value, person to person, I can lie to you. Yep. Right? I can say things I don't really mean. I can tell you things that I know you want to hear. Right? We can have small talk as people. But when we communicate with God, it's at a higher level than that. Okay? I don't just have small talk with God. When I communicate with God, there's something powerful about that. There's something happening there more than just me using my mouth or using my mind. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, it will in a minute. You see, I'm not just reciting words that I learned when I'm praying to God. I'm not saying a prayer 
in certain dialect or certain words or something like that. It's not a complicated thing, but it's more involved than we imagine. Okay? There are two components of prayer that we must communicate to God through. Two components of prayer that we must communicate to God through. The first one is our spirits. Okay? Our spirits. John 4.24, Jesus says, For God is spirit, so those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay? So any communication that goes on with God is done by our spirit. Does that make sense? We don't just communicate with our mouth, we communicate with our spirit because God is spirit. I don't speak to God just from my head. I don't worship just by singing a song. It's not my words at face value that touch God. Okay? God is spirit, and my communication with God is on a spiritual level. I know that sounds kind of mystic to some of you, but, but it's not really. Because when we, when we communicate with God, we say, okay, I'm speaking from my heart. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. When you say, I'm really communicating with God from my heart, that's your spirit. All right? The, the total of your mind, will, and emotions. That's how you're communicating with God. See, I'm not small talking with God. When I communicate with God through my spirit, I'm not lying. And I'm not telling him what he needs to hear. I'm offering up what's in me. That's right. Okay? I'm offering up what's inside of me. That's why if there's unforgiveness in my spirit or in my heart, it's hard to pray. Yeah. That's why if I had a fight with my wife last night and we went to bed mad and we got up mad... It's hard for me to get up and just really communicate with God. Right? Why? Because there's something in there that shouldn't be in there. That's what's in my spirit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when we're communicating with God, it's our spirit speaking to God. It's, it's, that's why I can speak either vocally or even from my mind because my spirit is communicating with God. And that's how we're talking to Him. My spirit speaks from, what's, from the abundance of what's in me. That's why it's so important that we stay in right relationship with God as we communicate with Him. Amen? And if there's not something right there, then we're praying a prayer of repentance. Lord, forgive me for this. You know, you know what's in my heart. You know what I've done. There's nothing hidden from you. Lord, forgive me. Yes. The Bible says if we're faithful to confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're not just talking about sinners that don't know Jesus. We're talking about saints. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's just an open communication from our heart to the Lord. That's what prayer is. That's the first component. And then there's another component that we have to have when we pray. And that's faith. Faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him, how do we come to Him? In prayer, right? We communicate with Him. Anyone who wants to come to Him first must believe that God exists. Right? right? They're like, uh, the man upstairs, you up there, somewhere above the constellations. You know, first of all, when we're praying, God, I know you hear me. God, I know you're there. I believe you exist. And that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Right? I'm not just throwing out words. I'm sincerely seeking the presence of God. By faith. That's when I touch God. Amen? That's when I touch God. If I'm going to come to God, I must believe that he is. I see him. I reach out to Him and I touch Him through faith. Just like I said this morning after worship, reach out and touch Him by your faith this morning. Ask Him, what do you need from Him? Right? And then we're, by faith we're asking Him, Lord, I need your healing touch. I need you to comfort me. I need your wisdom today, Lord God. And I'm asking for it by faith. I believe that He is and that, that if I ask Him for something, I will be rewarded. He will answer Right? Prayer is never a one-sided communication. A lot of times we make it that. We, we throw up our words to God and we walk away. That's not prayer. That's not prayer. Prayer involves your spirit touching the spirit of God. Your faith touching God. And God answering you. 
That's a powerful thing. A lot of times we don't think about that when we're praying. If I'm not communicating with God from my heart or my spirit through faith, what am I doing? Just kind of, you know, talking to hear myself talk. Jesus said, you know, so many people uh, think that, that God hears them especially because of their many words. No, Jesus said, when you pray, get in your quiet place, get in your closet, you know, and, and pray to the Father in secret. And you've got to get alone with Him. You've got to seek Him, find Him, and then communicate with Him. That's when you get rewarded, right? No, well, I'm on my way to work, Lord, so I hope you hear me today because, you know, I'm just kind of weaving through traffic and trying to communicate with you. It's really hard to do. Amen? But prayer is an important thing. We need to understand that. Now, prayers of agreement must contain the same two elements. When we come together in prayer, there, there has to be those same things there, right? We pray from the same spirit, and we pray with the same faith. Okay? Philippians 2, verse 1, Paul says this, Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ... If there's any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind. Everybody say same mind. Same mind. Maintaining the same love. Everybody say same love. Same love. United in spirit. Say united in spirit. United in spirit. Intent on one purpose. Everybody say one purpose. One purpose. One purpose. When we come together as believers, that's how we come together. With one mind. One heart, one spirit, one purpose. Amen? That's what makes for a powerful prayer. You know, we don't need to come with our own agenda. We come to accomplish the purpose of God. How can we be united in spirit? Donald Kirsten. Use Don. He's a good-looking guy. Yes. He's still available, ladies. <laughs> Come this way. All right, let's see. If we get close enough together and press oh hard enough together, our spirits will meld, and then we can be one spirit, right? No, that's, that's not how it works, right? <laughs> Turn around. Now. Take my hand. Come on, have some affection. Have some compassion. <laughs> when we pray together, we're joining together our spirits because we both are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And we're joining together our spirits in the Holy Spirit, praying together. Amen? Mm -hmm. And this whole group of people can do the same thing. Well, I kind of like it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Donovan. <laughs> but we're, we're joined together in one spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. Amen? We're all praying together with that same spirit. When we pray in agreement, we aren't each joining our spirits together. We're each joining together in the Holy Spirit, united in prayer. Does that make sense? 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 12, 4, Paul says, There are different kinds of gifts and so many spirits. Right? No. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in every one, it is the same God at work. When you're praying, and I'm praying, and we're praying together, you know, you're not praying to your God, and I'm praying to my God, and we're hoping for two different results. We're all praying to the same God, by the same Spirit, expecting the same result. Amen. Mm -hmm. What's the result? Whatever His Word says. Mm -hmm. We're praying according to His Word, according to His will, expecting the same result. In the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what prayer of agreement is. It's impossible to pray in agreement with someone who doesn't know God. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's right. I cannot pray with a Muslim and pray to the same God. So that's not a prayer of agreement. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. I cannot pray with a Buddhist and pray to the same God and expect the same result. I pray in agreement with children of God, mm -hmm. with other Christians, because we have the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. The second component that we have to have in a prayer of agreement is faith. 
It's impossible to pray in agreement with someone who doesn't have faith or who doesn't speak faith. See, faith is believing God and speaking that. Right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says if you believe... Or if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, what will happen? You'll be saved. Right? 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Hmm. So what do we speak? We, we believe and speak what is written in the Word of God. We have a common faith, and that common faith must be based on His Word and His will, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There was an instance when Jesus was walking with His disciples and a man named Jairus came up. And he said, please come and heal my daughter, she's dying. So Jesus, it said, the Bible says, went with him to heal the daughter, right? And on their way, there was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. We talked about this Wednesday night. She had been bleeding for 12 years. She had gone to the doctor, spent all of her money, didn't get any better, she got worse. And then she heard that Jesus was coming by. And in her spirit, and by her face, she said, if I can just get to him and touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. Right? Mm -hmm. So she pressed through the crowd, and she reaches out and touches Jesus. And what happens? What she said, by her faith, happened. It says, at that moment, she was healed from her ailment. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, who touched me? Right? The disciples are like, what do you mean? Everybody's touching you. We're in a crowd. You ever been in a crowd? Everybody touches you, right? No, no, this was different. I felt power leave my body. Something mm -hmm. happened. So he turns around, he sees the woman, she says what happens, and he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Right? He didn't say, look at me, I made you well, even though he did. What was he proclaiming? Your faith has made you well. Right? And then right after that happened, somebody comes up, uh, while he was still speaking, verse 35 of Mark chapter 5, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead, why trouble the teacher any further? It's over. Just tell Jesus to go home. Right? Now what would that do to your faith? If you heard that, you know, I've got Jesus on the way, you know, we had to stop for this woman, you know, bleeding for 12 years, but my daughter's dying. And then you hear, she's dead. It's over. The Bible says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, he said to Jairus, do not be afraid, or do not doubt. Only believe. Why did he say that? Why did he say that as soon as Jairus heard it? Because doubt was already entering in, right? Fear was already entering in. He was already giving up. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Don't be afraid. Don't start doubting. Only believe. And then they continue their journey. See, when you hear bad news, folks, it, it doesn't mean it's over. That's right. you know, just like we celebrated on Easter a couple of weeks ago, it's not over mm -hmm. So God said it's over, right? That's right. And this is important, verse 37, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Why was that? Because he knew who would have the faith to believe that what he was going to pray, what he was about to do, would make it happen, right? Hmm. It's very important, folks, when we come together in agreement that we all have the same faith. Jesus understood that. <clears throat> then he came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he saw a tumult of those who wept and wailed loudly. And when he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. See, he, he spoke words of faith. And uh, everybody said, wow, man, that's cool. Let's see her get up. <laughs> no, I said, everybody started laughing at him. Everybody ridiculed him. So what did he do to them? Get out. Right? Mm -hmm. 
You're not going to have faith that she's alive and get out. And when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with them, Peter, James, and John, and entered where the child was lying. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. Amen. Powerful. Powerful. See, Jesus had the ability to raise her no matter what, right? But he needed those around him who also had that same faith. When we pray in agreement, we must also agree in faith. And once we pray, our faith doesn't stop there. Right? When I pray for something, that's not when I'm using my faith. My faith comes after I pray, and I begin to walk it, and I begin to live it. Right? We continue to speak faith in agreement once we've prayed it. Right? We don't go out after a prayer meeting and start saying, well, I didn't see it, so I guess it didn't work. <laughs> you know, Aunt Ethel, she didn't get her healing this time. We're just going to have to, you know, keep praying, I guess. It didn't happen. Is that speaking faith? Nope. No. No. What did you ask God for? Her healing. What did you believe for? Her healing. Now what are you speaking? She didn't get it. <laughs> That's not faith. That's not faith. Right? But we do that all the time. Faith is commitment to what we just agreed about. Hmm. If I pray with my family for God's provision, then my family will go out of this house talking about how God is providing for us, not how we're so poor. Hmm. <laughs> Amen. If I'm going to pray with a group of people for God to heal my nation, then when I'm done praying... I expect myself and everyone who prayed with me to, to be committed to speaking that God is healing our nation. Amen. Not giving over to arguing politics or talking about how bad everything gets. Well, then why did I pray? That's right. That's right. Some of you need to let that sink in for a minute. That's why it's so important in the church for us all to be on the same page. Amen? Mm -hmm. Seriously. An effective church must be made up of like-minded believers committed to each other. But in most churches today, a majority of people don't even know each other. Mm -hmm. And we're all trying to come together in agreement. Mm -hmm. How are we going to do that? I don't know if you have the same faith as me. Mm -hmm. That's why our pastor preaches the word. And we hear, when we hear the word, what, what comes? Faith. Faith comes, right? That's how we all get on the same page. We, we go to the, the, the membership class so we can hear what we believe. You know, what does this church believe? How, how do we minister in our world? It's a very important thing. We can't have this side of the church believing one thing and this side of the church believing something else. That's right. Jesus himself said, even concerning the devil, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Right? Mm -hmm. See, here, here's the reality of it. If I'm sick, and I have a group of Christians praying for me, you know, really deathly sick, I don't want this group over here praying, God heal him, and this group over here saying, God receive him into heaven. <laughs> I want them all praying, God heal him. You know, I don't want a couple of different things being asked of God. I want His will to be asked. And His word says that by His stripes, I was healed. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When we come together in agreement, we need to agree upon what we're going to believe for. When my mom was really sick in the hospital, uh, she was in you know, some of her last days, uh, one of the pastors of a church came uh, to pray. And, and I liked that he did this. Because when he came before our family prayed, he said, okay, what are we praying? Are you praying, you know, God heal my mom? Or are you praying, uh, God take her home? Mm -hmm. There you go. See, before, he before he even prayed, he said, okay, how are we going to pray? Mm -hmm. Right? That's what we need to understand. A prayer of agreement is that we agree upon what we're going to pray for and what we're going to believe for and what we're going to go out speaking after 
if it's not that, then it's not an agreement. Why is it so quiet here? Because you're intently listening and learning something, right? <laughs> if I have people praying for me, I want them all to agree together. I want my friends in prayer for me to go the extra mile for me. Right? That's what we need to be willing to do for each other. The Bible says there was a time when Jesus was in a house and he was so popular because of all his workings of miracles and healings that the house was so packed out nobody could get in. He said there were four men that, that brought their friend who was paralyzed to Jesus because they wanted to see their friend healed. And they couldn't get in the door. So what do they do? Well, let's find another way. They all went up on the roof. You know, they, I could see them dragging their paralyzed friend up on the roof. Hopefully they were doing it on a cot and not, you know, ropes under his arms. He! He! Let's get him up here! It says they tore a hole in the roof and they lowered him down right in front of Jesus as he was ministering. It says when he looked at them, what is the first thing he saw? Mark chapter 2, verse 5. Then Jesus saw their faith. See, they, they were coming together intent on one purpose, and that was seeing their friend healed. And obviously forgiven, because the first thing Jesus did was forgive his sins. Right? And everybody said, oh, blasphemy! Who does he think he is he can forgive sins? And Jesus said, well, which is easier to say, son, your sins are forgiven you, or take up your pallet and walk? See, it would have been a lot easier for him to just say, son, your sins are forgiven you, because nobody can see that. Right? But in the spiritual realm, it's a lot harder because that's the greater miracle. Mm -hmm. Ooh, somebody just got something. <laughs> right? What's the greater miracle? See, we all say, oh, I, I just wish God would do great things in me. He forgave you of your sins. That's the greatest miracle in the universe. Amen. But he's asking them, which is easier to say? But so that you know that the Son of Man has power on earth or authority on earth to forgive sins, I say to you, rise up, take your mat, and walk. And immediately, he stood up and walked. Right? Now, could he have gotten himself there? No. He needed friends in agreement with him to get him there. Sometimes that's what we all need. Right? Sometimes there's trials that I'm going through that I just can't get there by myself. See, the things going on in our nation, we're all praying as individual Christians, but there's, there's something that we need to come together to do as a nation. Because prayer of agreement is powerful. Amen? Amen. When Jesus rose from the dead and he was with his disciples, and then he was about to ascend, he said, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which will come to you not very long after this. Right? And then it says, after he ascended, in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, they all went to this place that was called the upper room, and it says, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. So they said, okay, we're, you know, Jesus told us to go wait for the promise of the Father. That's what we're going to go do. They didn't go to the restaurant, you know, and have something to eat. They all got together and said, man, we, we need to pray. We need to come together on this thing. Promise of the Father. We're not sure what it is. You know, we, we know it's going to be the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're asking for. So we're agreeing together. It says they were all in one accord. They were all in unity praying and in supplication. For about ten days. How many of you have ever had a 10-day prayer meeting? <laughs> what about a 10-minute prayer meeting? Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, where were they at? They were still there. They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound. Here it came. A sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, it's important for you to know with whom you're praying and with whom you're worshiping and what you're praying for, what you're agreeing about. Get to know the people in this church. Church. Mm -hmm. 
get to know the people in your prayer circle. Find out what their faith is. If their faith is weak, strengthen their faith. The Bible's full of that. Paul says that all the time. Strengthen one another's faith. Sing to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, encouraging one another. Why do we do that? Because I'm strengthening your faith because your faith needs to be as strong as my faith if we're going to agree together in faith. That's true. Right? So we need each other. Church is more than just a gathering place. We're the body of Christ. Amen. We need to get together on something. Mm -hmm. We need to come together on something. We need to pray together on something. <coughs> See, great things can happen if this whole room, just individually, you prayed your own prayer. That would be great. But what could happen if we just all came together with the same faith, mm -hmm. same spirit, praying for the same thing? Jesus said, whatever you ask for, in my name, the Father will give it to you. That's Jesus saying, it's not Pastor Shane saying, and I'm off the hook on this one. I'm just telling you the truth of what Jesus said. That's what we need to expect. So if I'm going to pray for my nation in 2016, by May of 2017, I'm not going to go, man, that didn't work. We need to pray again. No, all year long from May 5th of 2016 till May whatever of 2017, I need to be speaking, God, we pray for you to heal our nation. You're healing our nation. Mm -hmm. yes. What's the evidence of that in my faith? Because faith is the evidence of things not seen. If I commission God to do something by His Word according to His will, then He's doing it. Right? Mm -hmm. It's so important to understand. The success of this church and the effectiveness of this body depends on our unity and our ability to agree. Not on the color of the carpet or, you know, the tile on the foyer or whatever, but agree on God's plan for our body, mm -hmm. God's plan for this church, God's desire to heal, God's desire to deliver, God's desire to save this community. Right? We need to agree on those things and pray together and believe together, and speak together what God's doing. Because there's power in agreement. There's power in the name of Jesus. That when we speak the name of Jesus together, let's bow our heads this morning.